Welcome to episode 30 of Pedagogy in Practice, and today we're going to be talking about the benefits of mobile design and why we might want to consider creating courses that are accessible on a mobile device. So let's dive in. So in this Pedagogy in Practice, we are going to be focusing on looking at the benefits of mobile-friendly design, the why of mobile-friendly design. Um, but if you're interested in looking at a bigger picture, there is this infographic available um, that I created and published on the blog. And so you can access it via the bit.ly's on the screen, or if you wanted to take your um, phone camera and scan the QR code, it's available there as well. But we're really going to be focusing in this pedagogy and practice on the first part, the why of mobile-friendly design. So there's really two big guiding principles um, that help um, support um, and, and demonstrate some of the benefits of mobile-friendly design. So the first is captivating student attention, and the next is designing for equity. So if everybody can just take a moment and think to themselves, how much time do students spend on their phones a day? So some of you may have thought perhaps constantly, um, but a study from 2015 shows that based on not self-report data, but actual usage, students were on their phones for over five hours a day, and they also frequently checked their phones. And when we think about this, um, it really provides us a, a great opportunity to redirect student attention from maybe TikTok or Instagram and direct it instead towards our coursework. And this is really powerful when we think about designing courses and learning experiences that students can use to fill the in-between parts of a day. Um, when we think about our students, many of our students may commute to campus or to work. Um, they may work multiple jobs um, or full time, and they may also be responsible for providing care to um, their children or family members. And so for these students in particular, having a course that they can um, maybe not necessarily complete the whole course on a mobile device, but that they could, um, you know, read a short article on the way to campus while they're on the bus, or they could watch a, a welcome video or an overview video for that week's work um, while they're at a 10 minute break at work, or maybe they're going to complete a getting to know you survey while they're um, up trying to get their kids to go back to sleep at, at 3 a.m. Um, and so in all of these ways, creating mobile-friendly learning experiences allows students to be able to complete components of the course as needed when they're, when they're filling the in-between parts of a day. And that's a great opportunity for us to captivate student attention and redirect it from maybe um, Instagram or TikTok and instead have students spend some more time on our courses. In this way, we can really see our courses extending beyond the con confines of a physical classroom and even beyond the confines of a laptop screen. Another way that um, mobile design, another benefit of mobile design is designing for equity. So as we can imagine, Americans are increasingly going on um, online via their smartphones, but there's also a huge amount of people who are reliant on their smartphones for home internet. So we see this um, smartphone dependency varies by age, income, and ethnicity. So starting off with age, we can see that for ages 18 to 29, there's a trend towards increased smartphone dependency. And in the year 2021, 28% relied on their phones for internet. Now, if we look at income, we can see that lower income households rely on their phones more frequently for internet. So for households earning less than 30,000, 27% were dependent on their phones for internet access, whereas only 6% um, of households earning over 75,000 were reliant on their smartphones for home internet. And finally, if we look at ethnicity, we can see that in 2021, 25% of Hispanic adults, 17% of black adults, and 12% of white adults respectively relied on their mobile devices to access internet in the home. And while we know that not every person in our courses may have a smartphone, we do know that many students rely on their phones to access internet. 
And so by designing our courses to be accessible on mobile devices, we can serve the groups of students who rely on their smartphones for home internet, while also captivating some of the attention many students are already directing towards their phone. So in future pedagogy and practices, we'll start to unpack how do we actually create mobile-friendly courses. Um, this was just a chance for us to reflect and think about some of the benefits of mobile-friendly course design. Thanks. Bye.